Hi, everyone. My name is Aaron Sada. I'm the CSO of Twist Bioscience, and I'm also the head of the Twist Biopharma Vertical here at Twist Bioscience. And today I'm going to tell you about how we're advancing novel SARS-CoV-2 um, therapeutic antibodies um, to the clinic. Um, when the pandemic hit, uh, we have, of course, a number of our libraries and our library libraries that are in phage display that are fully human synthetic libraries that we use to um, pan and screen against the SARS-CoV-2 virus. We also, as you'll see in a second, uh, generated some very nice antibodies in collaboration with um, Dr. James Crow at Vanderbilt, where we actually created a um, library derived from sequences um, from a SARS-CoV-2 survivor. And so from those two sets of libraries, we created a full suite of IgGs from the Vanderbilt collaboration and also a whole panel of VHH antibodies from our uh, uh, single domain libraries. These antibodies that have high affinity are unbiased and leverage, again, the TWIST platform for synthesizing algal pools to then generate high quality, highly diverse DNA libraries, which of course, in this case, we're making antibody libraries and putting them in the phage display. These leads are well validated. Um, they, we have extensive pseudovirus and live virus data, both in vitro, as well as in vivo and hamster models. So when you look at the SARS-CoV-2 virus and ways to attack it, of course, um, like most other labs throughout the world, um, we generate antibodies to the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein um, shown on the left. <clears throat> Again, the SARS-CoV-2 virus infects our cells through binding to ACE2 receptor on our epithelial cells. And so we found um, the antibodies that I'll show you today, the IgGs actually bind the N-terminal domain of the spike protein and neutralize through an allosteric mechanism. And then the second um, set are our VHH antibodies, which were again generated from our library of libraries that are single domains that again were designed off of llama based diversity. And these bind to the SARS CoV 2 RBD protein and, and, and directly block the interaction between spike and ACE2. We were able to generate these antibodies in a very short period of time. We generated over 200 different antibody leads in under six weeks. These are the IgGs that we discovered through the Vanderbilt collaboration. They have, they have double digit nanomolar affinity to the spike monomer or the spike trimer. Um, so they're, they bind tightly, but they're not like super high affinity, but because they don't actually compete with ACE2, S1 interaction, they don't actually need to be that high of affinity. And what we find is that these antibodies um, down in the bottom left show really nice um, pseudovirus neutralization and also show potent um, live virus neutralization against SARS-CoV-2. In terms of our nanobi leads, we actually see much more potent activity, both in pseudovirus and as you'll see in a second, live virus data. These nanobodies also bind very tightly to the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein. And as a result, um, our potent neutralizers um, of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Shown here are just our top three leads that have sub microgram per mil, even nanogram per mil uh, neutralization and pseudovirus neutralization assays. And these are all VHH FCs. So again, they all have an FC domain for long half-life. When we look at the live virus neutralization of these, of both the IgGs as well as the VHH FCs, we see a nice concordance between the pseudovirus data and the live virus data and that the ones that show the most potent inhibition in pseudovirus also show potent inhibition in live virus. And so we basically moved forward all of the IgGs as well as the VHHFCs that showed um, great activity in both assays. And as you'll see in a second, um, our nanobodies show extremely high um, potency, both in vitro and in vivo. And the IgGs also show great activity in both assays as well. The model that we used was this <clears throat> transiently uh, immunosuppressed hamster model. So basically, we uh, we treat we treat the hamsters with with our with our collaborators at USAMRID um, with cyclophosphamide. The hamsters became very sick and immunosuppressed, and as a result, they were actually became more susceptible to SARS-CoV-2 infection. Under these conditions, they actually show dramatic weight loss associated with infection, and so and so we can also track not only um, the viral load in the lung of these animals as they get sicker and sicker with a, upon infection with the virus, we can also track their weight loss associated with infection. So you can actually see that here in this uh, control experiment. We see dramatic weight loss associated with infection. So that's exactly what we did. We used this model initially in a preventative sense to actually, actually uh, dose the animals up front with the antibodies and then look to see 
um, if we can uh, protect them against weight loss as well as uh, viral load associated with SARS-CoV-2 infection. So that data is shown here on the top here. Um, we looked at three, two of our nanobodies as well as one of our IgGs. And what we see at a very low dose of one mg per kg. Um, so here in the, is the control where we see where we dose them with just uh, a control antibody, see dramatic weight loss associated with infection. And, but then you can see at one mg per kg for our two nanobody leads, which are VHHFCs, you see nice protection against weight loss. Um, our IgG, on the other hand, does not show this. It actually at the one mg per kg dose, it does show some um, weight loss associated with infection, but at higher doses, I'm not showing the data here, we actually see nice protection against weight loss. So at five and 10 mg per kg, we see some protection. And then we also did a therapeutic model with our top nanobody leads, um, where we first infected the animals with SARS-CoV-2, and then asked, and then gave, dosed them um, six and 48, 12 and 48, or 48 and 72 hours later with this nanobody to see if we could then um, uh, reverse the effects of the weight loss associated with infection. And actually what we see is that six and 48 hours, we actually see nice reversal of uh, the, the detrimental effects of the SARS-CoV-2 virus in this model. Again, showing that we potentially could also have a therapeutic effect with people that might get infected with SARS-CoV-2, and then we could dose them afterwards with our antibody. When we look in the lungs of these animals, we also see dramatic uh, decreases in titer of the virus as well, which makes sense because, again, we're neutralizing the virus in vivo as well. When we actually look at the epitopes that these antibodies bind to, we actually did a nice collaboration with integrated molecular where they did a full alanine scan of the spike protein. And we asked the question, where are where do our particular antibody leads bind to? So the, the TB2023 and 63 are top antibody leads. They actually bind on the side of the stock of the RBD, um, not directly um, where ACE2 binds, but they do, of course, block ACE2 binding to the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein. They bind in a very unique epitope, which is actually pretty invariant across all the variants. And so potentially these antibodies show, might show uh, really nice activity against all the uh, variants of interest that are out there currently. So the, uh, of course, the UK variant, South African variant, Brazilian variant, and some of the others that are coming up in California and India. Uh, when we actually look at the kinetics of binding of these top antibody leads, and in this case, CB2 or 2-3, against the South African as well as UK variants, we see, again, nice binding uh, to these new, these, uh, these new variants, again, showing that our antibody lead might have uh, very potent activity in, in vivo, um, not only against the wild-type Wuhan strain, but also the UK and South African strains. So just to conclude, we show very nice potent activity in vivo with our leads that we identified in a matter of six weeks. We've made also made some multivalent versions and heterodimeric versions of these VHHFCs. I didn't show that data today, but multimerizing the, the VHHs does show some benefit and uh, increased avidity binding to the spike protein. And we're, act, we're uh, rapidly moving ahead to scale up these antibodies for additional preclinical as well as IND enabling studies. And we hope to be uh, moving these towards the clinic very soon. And I uh, thank you for your attention and I'd be happy to answer any questions.